So you're thinking about wanting to own the greatest tractor ever made? Well, I think you're in the right place. You know, these old Ford tractors are pretty cool. They've really lasted the test of time and you know, there's still a lot of them around. As a matter of fact, pretty sure it was the uh, most sold tractor ever. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, a few years ago when I bought this one, I ended up paying $1,700 for it. And I thought it was a pretty good deal. I went over and looked at it at the guy's house that I was buying it from. And we, uh, we started it up and drove it around a little bit and everything seemed to function just fine. And, you know, that's kind of what I was worried about is does it start? Do the hydraulics work? You know, and beyond that, I knew there'd be repairs. I mean, it's 70 plus years old. You know, and what's crazy about spending the 1700 for it is uh, if I could have just been lucky enough to be born maybe back when it was made around 1949, I could have had the luxury of only spending about 1400 to buy it brand new. It's amazing how much they've not only held, but increased their value all these years. Cleans up pretty good. I think I need new tires. Been like that since I got it. The earlier models, the nine ends, if you'd have been old enough to buy one of those brand new, you could have done it for about $650. Crazy. I mean, you can't hardly do anything for $650 now. You know, the truth is, just like anything else that you own, there's going to be maintenance, and maintenance costs money. But honestly, the maintenance on this is not really any more than a car. You know, oil changes, um, hydraulic fluid changes. You know, I think a hydraulic fluid change run you probably about 75. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Run you about $75 for the uh, tractor fluid. You know, and then your oil changes, just typical oil and filter for that. So, well, you're going to have maintenance and you're going to learn a lot. That's, that's one of the important things. I had it for a year before I knew it did that. Pretty slick idea, especially when it's raining out. You don't want a wet butt. You know, so what are these old tractors worth? You know, or... Should I say, what, do, what should you expect to pay? Well, like I said, I paid $1,700 for this one. I've seen them as low as $500, well, and almost free, I guess, but they don't run. And I've seen them as high as about $6,000. But I gotta be honest, that one was completely restored. Looks brand new, probably better than brand new. All of the fancy stickers and everything on it that you could possibly imagine. And who knows if that person even got $6,000 for it. But that sure was a nice looking tractor. But I think the thing is that you got to remember is that, you know, $1,400 in 1949, well, that's going to be about $18,000 now, adjusted for inflation, that is. And if you kind of look around, you know, most of the tractors that are about $18,000 nowadays are essentially this. You know, some of them have buckets on them and different things like that. And you can get buckets for these as well. But those are some of the things that I think you need to consider. You know, and what are you going to learn with a new tractor? You know, how to do donuts and drive it around in circles. You know, with an old one, you get experience. You know, you get to tinker with it and tear it all apart. That's half the fun. It can be frustrating at times, but, you know, that's most things in life. Just got to look at the positive. Be happy for the times when it's actually running. You know, and you're going to have maintenance. They call this thing here a carburetor. You know, and I've had that thing tore apart more times than I care to even remember. You know, but now the tractor's running great. and Heck, I'm kind of at the point where I'm scared to even touch it. And if you've been paying real close attention, you've probably noticed that uh, this one here has an alternator on it. Well, they didn't come originally with alternators. They came with generators. And the reason this one has the alternator on it is because I upgraded to the 12 volt system. And, you know, looking back, to be honest, I, I probably wouldn't have 
converted it to the 12 volt system over the six volt in hindsight, I don't think it makes much difference. But at the time I was looking for something to do that I felt comfortable with and the electrical part was a lot more comfort than, you know, tearing apart carburetors or manifolds or, you know, anything like that. You know, and the crazy thing is, you know, as many of them as they made, they're all just a little bit different. They got just a little bit different setup and design and a little bit different look to them. You know, different transmissions and things like that. Never really seen any that are absolutely identical, whether it's the dash, uh, the gauges, you know, previous things the owners did. You know, what happened to it all those years? You know, if you look at the inside of this tank here, or, the, or if you look at the inside of this hood here, at one point somebody thought they should have painted it yellow. I don't know what the heck they were thinking. You know, safety wasn't as big of a concern back in the day as it seems to be now. These tractors can be pretty dangerous. This was the very first thing that I bought once I took ownership of this tractor. This is a cover for the PTO, and it keeps that thing covered because there's a little... Uh, deal in there that likes to spin when the PTO is turned on and if you were to get an article of clothing hooked into that or your shirt or your hair or any other type of uh, maybe strap or chain that would not be a good day. You can uh, ask my great grandfather about that one. I will uh, put a link down in the description to a video talking about that. You know while I'm back here I'll talk about this back bucket. Um, I had a guy on one of the videos, David, he asked a question about how I did it. See, uh, this, uh, this bucket wasn't originally this design. It originally faced forward as all of the other Dearborn models, uh, just like it did. And I decided I wanted one that I could back into instead of drive into. And so I cut some pieces off of it and welded some other pieces on. And this is what I ended up with. So you can see right here, I welded these ears on and uh, have them back so that the arms can come down and get hooked up on both sides. And then I took this top link and I uh, cut it and put this section in the middle so that it was long enough to reach. And then I uh, welded on this uh, top link uh, deal here. And uh, it seems to work pretty good. But uh, I also, I, I cut off a piece here on the front and, uh, and use that somewhere else. I'll show you in a second. But uh, I'll take you over and show you what it should originally look like so you can kind of get a better idea of what I cut off and where I welded stuff on. You can see here, this is the piece that I took off of the other one and cut up. And you can see back here, if I move some of the, the weeds out of the way, maybe not, there we go. This is where I welded those ears on the back so that the arms could come down and hook on. So even if you own one of these tractors already, but uh, you'd like to see something specific on my tractor and how it maybe differs a little bit from yours, you know, shoot me a comment down in the uh, comment section. And if I can't answer it there, I'll probably throw it in the middle of a video somewhere. You know, some of these things about these old tractors is kind of learning by doing. And I'll tell you this, this right here, this is the dipstick for your hydraulic fluid. And long before you'll ever even get a chance to check that for the first time, you're going to sit down on this seat, put your heel down on that, and bust this little handle clean off. Not exactly sure what they were thinking with that design. But if you like tinkering and having fun, these are pretty good tractors. You know? I think 26 horsepower was what they were originally designed with, which in modern times doesn't sound like a whole lot of power, but... I think you'll be surprised. You'll get yourself scared more than once or twice on it. So if you're interested in getting yourself an old tractor, I'd say with the Ford 8N, the greatest tractor ever made, I don't think you can go wrong. If you're interested in annual maintenance on these, I'll tell you what, I got a few videos that I made on changing the oil and changing the hydraulic fluid, and I'll put those uh, videos down in the description down below. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching today, and uh, hope maybe you learned something, and now you can go out and get yourself a Ford tractor just like this one. Hopefully better. Come on, start.